First you need to find an image from the top angle where you can see the gums and teeth. We're gonna use this one as our reference to model the gums and get the idea of where we should place the teeth so the placing wouldn't be incorrect. In Blender, go to top view, shift A and add image reference. Select the image you just downloaded, shift A again and add a torus this time. Click on the option in the bottom left and lower the segment number so it would be easier to handle. Tap to go to edit mode, then go to wireframe mode. Press 1 for vertex select mode, select the bottom half. Press X and vertices to remove those parts. Do the same thing to the right side. and the model modifier properties, add a mirror modifier, enable clipping and drag the edge to the center so they stick together, rearrange the vertices based on the image so we can have the gums shape close to the real ones. If you are in vertex select mode, make sure drag and select the vertices so it select both sides. If you just click on the vertices, it only select the vertices on top. Once you're done, go back to solid mode. You should have something like this. In the edit mode, press 2 for edge select mode. Hold alt and click on these edges and S to scale it up so it wouldn't be so round. Then select the top and bottom one. Press S and Z to scale it in the Z axis and push it inside so we have a fairly flat surface. Add the subdivision surface modifier to smooth it out. In the wireframe mode, while in top view, try to get it close as possible to the image. Once you are happy, get out of the edit mode. I forgot to do it, but hover your mouse on the mirror modifier and press ctrl a to apply it. Shift a and add a cube. Press tab to edit mode. Press a to select all. Bring it to the bottom. Scale it and place it on the tooth. As you probably know, the front teeth are fairly slim and get thicker once it gets to the bottom. Now go to the other view and bring it up on the gums. Shift a to duplicate. Escape to place it back. Then in the edit mode, move it on the other tooth. Select the points and fix it right on the image. Do that one more time. Make sure you're always moving it in the edit mode so you don't change the center point because we're gonna add mirror modifier later and we need that center point. Once you're done, back to solid mode and the modifier properties, add a mirror modifier to each of them, then a subdivision surface to smooth it out. You see the whole thing curled up. To fix that, hover your mouse in the middle and press ctrl R to add a loop cut, then drag it to the left. Do that one more time for the right. Make the tooth longer by dragging these points to the bottom. Maybe add another loop cut but this time horizontally. Then select the top edges and scale them down. Do the same to the second one. Second tooth is pointier, so make it a bit pointier in the bottom. Model it while looking at the reference image to get the shape right. The third tooth is sharper in the bottom. Once done, shift D to duplicate, escape to place it back. Then in the edit mode, move it forward. Now from this tooth, it's getting way thicker than the front ones. So in the edit mode, select the back vertices and drag them to the back. Select the front ones and push it forward. Maybe add a loop cut by pressing Ctrl R in the middle. Back in solid mode, select the vertex in the center and push it down into the tooth. And add a few loop cuts to each side to make it more detailed. Then back in the top view, just duplicate them and shape them like the image. Since we're going to sculpt the gums and teeth, you need to see all the details from every angle possible. So save up as many teeth images as you can. Make sure they got good quality and have a decent lighting. Constantly look at them and analyze them because teeth have different shapes and sizes that you need to get right. Length of the gums is still too short. In the edit mode, I select the top vertices and drag them up. Now check if your teeth needs more polygons since we're going to sculpt section. If you don't have enough vertices, you're gonna lose a lot of details in the middle parts. Now select the teeth one by one. Delete the subdivision surface modifier and add a multi as modifier instead. Then subdivide one time. Do that to all of them. Now it's ready to be sculpted. Go to a sculpting tab. Pick up a grab brush by pressing G, then shape the tooth based on the reference image. 
Once you're done with the first tooth, you can easily switch to the second one by moving your mouse on the tooth and pressing Alt Q. Then start working on this one. Just look at the reference images from each side to figure out the shape of each one. We are not going into details right now, so just shape the basic form without subdividing. You can subdivide one more time if you think it's too low poly. Now we're getting into phase 2. Back of the teeth, especially the front ones, are stretched to the back a bit. Pick up the grab brush and drag the bottom of the tooth to the back. Maybe push the middle inside to make it thinner. If you look at some of the reference images, you see the back of the front teeth are not completely flat. So I used draw or trees brush to make a line in the middle. Not an intense one, just to make it pop out a bit. Now from this tooth, things get interesting. These don't look anything like the front teeth. Instead we got this kind of a hole in the middle that spreads like a river throughout the tooth. These are small, but it gets way more intense when we get to the back of the mouth. I subdivide one more time. Using draw brush, I add the details. Just adding and subtracting till I get it close to the image. When you've done the biggest details, you can subdivide and sculpt the small ones. I'm using crease brush, it's pretty nice for these parts. You just need to draw the line over those parts. And don't you take your eyes off the reference, it's really important. Once you get the hang of it, do the same procedure to the other teeth. Make sure you have the main shape of the tooth in mind. For example, the corners are higher than the rest, so we can push it up using grab brush.
Now for the visible parts in the front. I'm adding a bit of details in the front, nothing too crazy. The lines from the back teeth continues to the front. Make sure you take care of that so it wouldn't look flat when you look at it at the front view. It's time for the gums. First thing, go to edit mode and fix the topology as much as needed. Maybe add a loop cut by pressing Ctrl R to the parts where you think needs more topology. Go to a sculpt mode. Using clay strip brush and holding control, push the middle down. You have probably seen the real shape of the tooth. It continues into the gum like a strong nail. Now these parts in the middle doesn't have any tooth in them so they should be lower than the rest. Once you're done, hold shift and smooth it out. Then using clay strip brush, I made a bump in the bottom of each tooth so it looks like the teeth pushing the gums forward. Remember to smooth out the rough edges by holding shift. After that, we have to make the teeth look like they went through the gums. Using wrap brush, I start forming the shape around each tooth and push up the space between each one. After that we can work more on the details, like random small bumps all around the gums or adding veins using crease brush and holding control to push the veins out, but don't add too much. When you are done with the front, go to the back and do the exact same thing there. Back of the teeth still needs more detail, so subdivide and add some ups and downs using crease brush. Something to keep in mind is that the teeth are not perfect, they have bumps and tiny cracks. If you're doing a stylized character, you can ignore this part, but if you want to achieve realism, you need to do this. Pick up the grab brush with a small size, push some parts to the top so it looks like a crack. Do that randomly to different tooth. For the finishing touches, I went back to the teeth. Pick up the crease brush again. Subdivide one more time, so we can really get into the details this time. I start pronouncing the creases throughout the teeth.
At the end, I decrease the size of the crease brush to something really small with low strength and I start subtracting thin lines on the front of the tooth. If you look close at a tooth, it's not completely clean and flat, so this ensures that light bounces on these bumps and give you realistic results. Now while selecting the gums, go to UV editing tab, in edge select mode, hold alt and click on the horizontal edges in the middle to select all the edges in that row. Press U and mark seam. Now press A to select all, U again and unwrap. Now get out of the edit mode and select the teeth. Ctrl J to join them all together. Go to edit mode again. In the edge select mode, select one edge in the bottom. Hold Ctrl Shift and click on the one on top to select all the edges in between. Make sure you're selecting the back of the tooth not front cause we're gonna unwrap the UV from the back. Press U and mark seam. Then do that to all of them. Once you've done that to all of them, press A to select all, then U to unwrap, and it is done. If you think it's good enough and don't need extra sculpting, select both the teeth and the gums. Press Shift D to duplicate, press R then Y to rotate in Y axis. Then press 180 on your numpad to rotate it 180 degrees. Then move it down in the bottom of the upper teeth. Make sure it's right in the bottom. Now the bottom teeth doesn't exactly look the same. Let's get it down just a bit. Maybe push it backwards so it fits in with the upper teeth. Shift edge to hide everything else. The shape of the teeth are different as well. Front teeth are much smaller. Pick up the grab brush with a big size. Drag the teeth to the center. Work on the teeth and make them smaller. Don't worry about the gums not being matched with the teeth cause we're gonna fix it later. Then select the gums. Decrease the multi-res scope number to something low. With the grab brush again, drag the bump parts and fit them right under the teeth. Press Alt H to unhide everything, then fix any issues you see, especially the parts around the teeth. And this is our final model. Since we UV unwrapped it, it's ready to be textured. In the next video, we're gonna paint it and make a nice shader for it. So tune in for that. If you find this video helpful, like and sub would be fantastic. And again, you can find the practice files and real-time videos on my Gumroad and Patreon page. Be sure to check out the next video. Peace.